Hi ladies, it's Mr. O'Sullivan. Today we're going to be looking at lesson 4-4, the equations of lines. I'm very sorry, but I won't be in today due to feeling under the weather, so please watch this video and follow along with your note sheet to fill in. So today's learning target is I can examine the connection between the equation of a line and its slope. So in algebra, whether it be with me or your old school or wherever you took algebra, you worked a lot with linear modeling and equations of lines. So we're not going to go over where those equations came from, but we're going to go over the basics in our first exercise down here. So if you remember, the slope intercept form of a line is y equals mx plus b, where m is your slope and b is your y intercept. Now, the nice thing about y equals mx plus b is it allows you to graph your equation rather quickly. Um, and it identifies your slope and your y-intercept right away. So, like, if you have y equals 3x plus 4, your slope is 3, and your y-intercept is 4. And then, boom, I can graph it. So, the thing that we need to remember, though, is that when we're graphing, slope, yes, is y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1, but it's also our rise over our run. So, we're figuring out if we're going up or down and to the right or to the left. So in the first exercise, we're actually going to just recap graphing real quickly. Um, and we're going to identify the slope and y-intercept of each of these lines and then plot them on the grid and then basically see what they have in common or any differences. So if we look at our first equation, we have y equals 2x minus 7. We said before that the slope was the number attached to our x. So in this case, our slope is going to be 2. So I can say my slope is 2, but what I do is I always put whole numbers over 1. So I'm going to actually do 2 over 1. And my y-intercept is the number hanging out by itself. So in this case, it's a negative 7. So here's what we're doing. Our slope is positive. It is 2 over 1. So what that means is we're going to go up 2, right 1, from negative 7. So let's plot negative 7. So if I plot negative 7, that should be down here. So I'm going to plot that point, and I'm going to go up 2, right 1. So I'm going to plot a point here. Then I'm going to go up another 2 and right 1, and up another 2, right 1. And I just keep going up 2, right 1 until I run out of room. And then if you look, I run out of room over there. So now, instead of going up, I can go down. And instead of going to the right, I can go to the left. So if I go back to my y-intercept, I go down 2, left 1. So I would end up over here. I then just draw a line going through my points like this. And that's the equation of our line. So y equals 2x minus 7. Now... Let's graph y equals negative 1 over 2x plus 3. So again, the slope is the number attached to x. So in this case, my slope is negative 1 half. And my y-intercept is a positive 3. So if we look, it's already a fraction, so I don't need to put it over 1. And that negative 1 is telling me to go down 1, right 2. You're always going to the right first. Always going to the right first. So we put a y-intercept at 3. And then we go down 1, right 2, down 1, right 2, down 1, right 2, down 1, right 2, down 1, right 2. And then I run out of room, so now I go backwards, and I go up 1, left 2, from the y-intercept. And then we draw a line going through the points. Now, if you notice, these lines intersect at this point right here, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 comma 1. So if I wanted to, I could actually say the solution to this system, or the solution to these two equations, is 4 comma 1, which is where those lines meet. Now, the thing is, you guys are in the 10th grade, so lines are actually not always going to be in that y equals mx plus b form, so you're going to have to do some simple manipulations to rearrange them into this form but it's always only like one or two steps. So in the exercise below, what we're going to do is we're going to practice rearranging into y equals mx plus b form 
and then identifying the slope and y-intercept of our line. So the goal is to always get that y term by itself. So if we look at our first example, we have y plus 2x equals 7. We want to get it into the form y equals mx plus b. So I'm going to draw a line down my equal sign, box the y, and ask myself, how do I get rid of a 2x? <coughs> so if I look, my 2x is currently being added, so I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides of my equation. So now I get y equals negative 2x plus 7. Always write the x term first. So if we look, our equation is now in that y equals mx plus b form. So now we can identify our slope and our y-intercept. Our slope is going to be negative 2, because that's the number attached to x. And our y-intercept is going to be 7 because that's the number hanging out solo. Now, let's look at example B. We have 2x plus 3y equals 12. We do the exact same thing we did before. We box that 3y, and we ask ourselves, how do we bring 2x over? Well, we subtract 2x. So now I have 3y equals negative 2x plus 12. Now, we have to ask ourselves, how do I get rid of the 3 attached to my y? Well, I divide, because it's being multiplied. So I divide it to every single term. So now I get y equals, I'm going to go to my calculator. And I'm going to do negative 2 divide 3. So negative 2 divide by 3. I get something crazy. I'm going to hit math, enter, enter. And it just stays negative 2 thirds. So I'm just going to write negative 2 thirds. So now I have y equals negative 2 over 3x. And now I do 12 divided by 3, which is a positive 4. And now it's in that mxb form. So my slope is negative 2 thirds. And my y-intercept is 4. Now let's look at c. c, we do the exact same thing. Box that negative 6y. How do we bring the 4x over? We subtract it. So I now have negative 6y equals negative 4x plus 7. And now we divide by a negative 6 to every single term. My negative 6 is cancel right there. So now I have y equals. I'm now going to do negative 4 divide by negative 6. Math, enter, enter. And I get 2 thirds. And now I'm going to do 7 divided by negative 6. And I get something crazy. <coughs> and I'm going to hit math, enter, enter. And I get negative 7 over 6. So if I look, my slope is 2 thirds again. This time it's positive, and my y-intercept is negative 7 over 6. Always just leave it as fractions. Alrighty, now that we have studied parallel and perpendicular lines and their slopes, we can consider problems involving their relationships. So on the grid below, we have the line S that is graphed as well as the point 2, 4. What we're going to want to do is we're going to want to draw a line that's parallel to S and goes through the point 2, 4, and draw a line that's perpendicular to S and goes through 2, 4. But the thing is, we know that parallel lines have the same slope and we know perpendicular lines have negative reciprocal slopes. And we want them to be parallel or perpendicular to this line right here, which is S. Now, if we look, we don't know what the slope of S is, but we can see that we have some points on there that'll help us find this slope. So if I look right here, this could be considered a nice point, which is negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 2. So I have negative 4, negative 2. 
And then I have this point right here, which is negative 2, 1, 2, 3. Negative 2, negative 3. Now if I want, I can plug that into my slope formula. So slope is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And now we're going to identify our x values and our y values. And now we're going to plug them in. So I have negative 3 minus a negative 2 over negative 2 minus a negative 4. Now when I type that into my calculator, I should just get negative 1 over 2 as my slope. So my slope of s is negative 1 half. which means I'm going down one, right two, down one, right two, down one, right two. So if you didn't wanna do the slope formula, you could have just did rise over run, but it's whatever you would like to do first. So if you wanna do the formula, you can do the formula. If you wanna do rise over run, you can do either, just as long as you get it correct. So now that we know the slope of line S is negative one half, now we can answer the questions. So for part A, it says draw a line that's parallel to S. So we want to be parallel to this line, and we want it to go through the point 2, 4. So if we know our slope is negative 1 half for S, and we want to draw a line that's parallel, then we also need a slope of negative 1 half again. Because parallel lines have the same slope. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at the point 2, 4, and go down one and to the right two. So down one, right two. And then keep going down one, right two until I run out of room. Now I ran out of room. So now I'm gonna go backwards and I'm gonna go up one, left two for my point two four. So I go up one, left two. And if you notice, we run out of room, and we can connect our points, and we can see that our lines are parallel to each other. They will never touch. Now, we want to write the equation of that pink line. So if we want to write the equation of that pink line, it's not that bad, because we know y is equal to mx plus b. We know what our slope is. Our slope is that negative 1 half. Now we just need to figure out our y-intercept. If we look at our graph, our y-intercept would be right here, which is the point 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So my equation of that pink line is y equals negative 1 half x plus 5. Now, for part b, it says draw a perpendicular line to s that passes through the point 2, 4, and to also write the equation of that line below. So we know that a perpendicular line is going to have a negative reciprocal slope. So if we know our slope was originally negative 1 half, then our perpendicular slope is going to be a flip. So 2 over negative 1. But the thing is, remember, if you start out negative, you're going to end positive. So this is really just 2 over 1. So that means I'm going to be going up to right 1 from that point two four. So now I go up two, right one, up two, right one, up two, right one, and I run out of room. So now I go down two, left one. So one, two, one, one, two, one, one, two, one, one, two, one, one, two, one. And then I can draw a line going through those points as well. Now, if we look, it is totally fine for it to intersect those lines because it's perpendicular. It's going to cross, and it's going to create right angles. And if I look, I have a right angle here, a right angle here, a right angle here, and a right angle here. So now my equation for this one is going to be the exact same thought process we did before. Well, we know our slope this time. It's 2 over 1. So we can write down y equals 2 over 1 x 
And now our y-intercept, this time, is just going to be 0, because that's where it crosses the y-axis. Now, if you want, 2 divided by 1 is just 2. So you can just leave this as y equals 2x plus 0, or you can just leave it as y equals 2x. All of those are totally fine. So that is our first day of working with the equations of line. We're going to do some more practice with it, so don't stress out. But if you have any questions, rewatch this video or let myself or Miss Townsend know. Have a great day, ladies.